Will deep powders work as acrylic powder? Today I'm about to find out. I'm going to try my 38 deep powders with monomer to see if they're actually working as acrylics. Coming up! Hello, I'm Anastasia, I'm nail technician and I love doing nails and experimenting with products. Usually I follow all the rules, so if some brand told me that you need to use this deep powder with this brand activator and base coat and top coat, I usually follow it because I don't want any problems with my nails, with my clients' nails. But also, sometimes when we mix different products we are even not supposed to mix, a cool new things and ideas come out. So I got this question from one of you guys. You asked me, can I use deep powder as acrylic powder? And I realized that I don't really know the answer to this question and the best way to find out is to actually try it. So I have 38 deep powders and I'm going to try them with monomer and see if it's working. Let's get started. So I have tips prepped, I have monomer. And let's start with gelish deep powders. I'm going to apply them on the tip and we will see if they're actually cure and if they will actually work as acrylic powder. I'm using acrylic brush as well, it's number eight. Let's start with color called Sheer and Silk. This moment it feels a lot like normal acrylic powder. And yeah, it is sheer, so you cannot really see anything. Okay, let's just put it aside and keep going. So the next color I wanted to try is called Tan My Height. By the way, this is the first color I ever tried with dip. I have a video with it as well on my channel and you guys been asking a lot what's the color. So that's the one. There is a slight shimmer, you cannot really see it, I think, through the camera because it's, the particles are so small and it's more like natural beige color. So I'm not going to try to do this like super perfect and even surface. And I apply a little more near the cuticle because I think this is how we can actually make a real experiment. Next one is white Arctic Freeze. Ooh, this is a really bright white and this one actually feels different from the rest of the powders. Yeah, I can tell it, it is a very fine powder. So with this kind of acrylics, if it was acrylic, you always want to clean your brush really well. Otherwise it will get clogged pretty fast. Ooh. If it will work as acrylic, I would probably use this color because it is super bright. I'm done with gelish deep powders and yes, I know normally for this experiment we should have tried all kinds of monomers, but come on. If we take any kind of acrylic powder with any monomer, it will at least cure. So, I mean, if it's not curing at all, obviously it will probably not work with any of the monomers. So, I have all different colors and we all know that different colors, even within one brand, they work a little differently. So, now let's just start touching and poking them and see if they work. So, the first one is Sheer and Silk and it's been, while I was doing the application, around three to four minutes. So, by now they should have been cured. And this first one is definitely cured. Then we have Tan My Height. It's still a little soft, but this, the thicker part, is definitely cured. Arctic Freeze is still very soft, as you can see. So, probably not ready. West Coast Cool. Oh my, well, it is a little soft right here but almost. I really like how red looks. I mean, if it's gonna work, it's gonna be cool. So it's hot, rod red, and now it's very soft. I don't think it is cured. Then we have Good Gossip, which is also soft. Are you lying to me? Very soft. Well, we just applied them, so that might be the case as well. Glitter and Gold. 
super soft and I assume of the grid the last one is also still soft. So the first ones, these two are almost hard, which means they would probably work as acrylic powder. But there is another issue. If it will take them to cure too long, that's also not gonna really work because come on, we cannot wait for so long. I mean, we cannot do the full set of 10 nails and then just wait. But anyways, I would give them another three minutes and see if something gonna change. If not, then it's not really gonna be a comfortable work as acrylic powder. It's been almost 10 minutes since we started, so that's obviously more than enough time to cure them. And the first one is definitely hard, sheer and silk, as well as 10 my hide. Arctic freeze is obviously too soft, so unfortunately it's not gonna work. West Coast Cool, pretty good. Red, not working. So I would eliminate these guys. This one is too soft as well. And this one, and gold. And this guy as well. So these two colors and the blue, only three colors worked. They hardened over time and it doesn't mean that they're gonna work as the perfect acrylic powder yet because I mean they have to be resistant to breaks and everything but I think still we can actually try them. Now let's switch to the other brand Kiara Sky. I have only five powders of Kiara Sky so there's not that much to try but still let's see how they are working. So the first one is called Guilty Pleasure and I have no idea why it's called like that because what kind of color do you expect when you hear this? Well, this is the color and ew, it feels pretty good actually working with it, stretching with it. I hope it will work, but I'm not sure. So I don't think Kiara Sky even have monomer, right? They have the sister company Glam and Glitz, but yeah, I think Kiara Sky they only have dip system. Let's try the next one, Smoky Fog, which is beautiful gray color, and it's gray, but it's grainy, and I think it's grainy on purpose. Works kind of cool. I mean, they're really soft and easy to stretch. And, hmm, well, it looked grainy only when it was a powder, but now the graininess is gone. So, hmm, that's a pretty nice, beautiful, dark gray color. So what I have to say is obviously that all the powders, they definitely take much longer to cure then acrylic powder, which is probably not very good, so I assume we might need a faster monomer if we try to work with them. Now we have Coral Kicks, and it's a pretty cool powder, but it's, I don't know, it doesn't even look like a powder. To me, it actually looks like some corals or seashells. I don't know, but it, it looks nice. Looks like there's no actual color underneath. It's just those uh, tiny orange and white dots. But no, you see, actually something is happening, so I guess there is some polymer base that keeps them together. Because in the jar, it looks just like a pure glitter or something like that. Then we have roses that are red, which is a classic beautiful red color. Wow, it looks beautiful and it stretches so well. It would have been perfect for ombres. Oh, I really wish they would work because, I mean, imagine, guys, I bet most of you have some deep powders already and that will be really a good deal if you could use them as acrylic powders as well. So you will not have to buy it twice. And the last one will be beautiful light blue color, which is called After the Rain. So most powders look darker when you use them with the monomer. Oh, this one, you see it separates with white, which is what happens with acrylic powders sometimes as well. 
So you see, I probably shouldn't place this bead differently, but still, if that would be an acrylic powder, I probably would have used it as the marble or for ombre as well. I don't know, today I'm in an ombre mood. I want to ombre everything. So this is it. Like I said, the application was quite satisfying, but what about the actual curing? So it's been a few minutes and that's like five, like we do five nails. And when we do the application on nail, it will take a little longer since I didn't build the apex or anything like that. But still, let's try the first one and see if it's soft. Yeah, it is very soft. Oh, well, so let's wait for like four minutes and see what happens. Guilty pleasure. Um, yes, it is pretty hard. Smoky folk. Not really. You see, I can still kind of poke it, so probably not. Coral kicks. Oh yeah, this one is definitely absolutely hard, so this one worked. Roses are red. Mm, not really. I guess the reds are not the best for this. Ooh, they also connected with the blue one. And the blue after the rain is... Mm, you know, it's like kind of half-half. I still can poke it, but it's almost hard. Okay, let's take it. <laughs> so, Kiara Sky 3 out of 5, not bad. Now, let's try NSI. And NSI says that you can actually use them as acrylic powder because it is the same formula. But their powders, their dip system is a little bit different. You need to cure it in LED or UV. So I guess they really do have a little different formula. And I already seen some NSI nail technicians working with these powders. But still, let's try them just to be sure. Let's start with the basic color, Silk Pink, which is a transparent pink powder. And oh wow, this one absolutely feels like acrylic, like way different than everything we tried before. I mean, you know, when you're an acrylic person, you just know once you take the bead. And yeah, I actually can feel how it cures as I stretch it. And I didn't have the similar feeling when I was working with other dips. All right, next one is Creme Brulee, which is a light beige color with a shimmer in it. And you see, when I apply them, um, it also looks to me like a total acrylic powder. Like it doesn't separate or anything. But that's also the, the issue of the color, right? Then we have Cloak and Dagger. This is one of my favorite colors. I also used it in one of my videos. I actually have a video with NSI Dip System. I can leave the link down below if you want to check it. And look at this, guys. This color is beautiful. Wow, yeah. So if it actually works as acrylic powder, I would be happy to use it. And I'm sure it will be one of the most popular colors. It's like pink with silver shimmer in it. It's so beautiful. Then we have Sugar Plum. This color separates a little bit. Yeah, you see it's not very even. And then we have Sweet Dreams. This one, I also used it as the dip and it's a beautiful lilac color. And yeah, we can also see it's separating, but as we stretch it, it's fine. So I guess the colors are pretty similar when you use them as the dip or as acrylic powders. And then we have a color called A Little Bird Told Me, which is a, this beautiful bright blue. NSI, they actually have a, also a really nice similar color of acrylic powder. Ooh. Look at this one. Yeah, and it's like 
half transparent, but it's uh, pretty intense at the same time. I don't know, it's really hard to explain, but I love this kind of blue colors because they do not mess up your brush too much, but they're dark and bright at the same time. Let's wait for a couple minutes and see if they're gonna work. So I didn't wait for a couple minutes. I was too impatient and decided to try them right away. So this one first, the silk pink is obviously cured. I mean, we can actually hear how hot it is. So yes, guys, feel free to use it as acrylic powder, especially when NSI assures us that this is the same formula. So I think there's nothing to be scared about. Creme brulee, yes, is hard as well. Cloak and dagger is slightly soft, but this is a shimmer powder. They usually take longer to uh, fully cure. So I think we need to wait for a couple of more minutes for those ones since we just finished working with them. And then we will know if they're cured. These powders are absolutely cured. So like in a world of actual acrylic powders, they follow the same rules. So these two guys that have shimmer in it definitely take longer to cure, which is fair. And these solid colors are absolutely hard. So you can use any high powders as acrylic. Next one is Revel Nail, and this is American company, and they do specialize on deep powders. I have eight colors, so we are going to try all of them, and they also have a few colors that change their color according to temperature or to the sun. So this is also kind of cool, and if they do work as acrylic powder, I wonder if they will have the same features. Let's start with clear. I don't know, maybe I'm really confused now after trying so many colors at once, but you guys, this one also does feel like an actual acrylic powder. It doesn't stick to a brush, it stretches pretty fast, and you probably cannot see it, but it's already matte, so it actually acts, acts like a fast setting acrylic powder. I don't know. Okay, that was clear. Now let's try Scarlet Flawless Pink, which I assume is a transparent pink. Probably has some color in it. Oh no, it is transparent and ooh, it applies so smooth and also kind of feels like an acrylic powder. So like I said, this is the company they specialize in deep powders only so they do not provide any information on whether you can use their system as acrylic or not. And there are also some brands that have three-in-one powders. They actually claim them as powder that can be used as acrylic, as dip, and then it depends. Sometimes you can use it as chrome powder or something else. I haven't tried those kind of products yet. Let me know, guys, if you did. I know that Lee Chat has one and I think there were a couple others. Now let's try white, Veronica French White, which looks like a super bright color. And hey, this one feels weird when you apply it. You see it like crumps or something. And no, actually once you apply it on the tip, it's pretty smooth and it sticks to brush a little bit and it usually happens when you're working with a super fine and super bright pigmented white, which is not usually the best thing when you work with acrylic because, I mean, sometimes you don't really need that crazy white. All right, so we tried the three main colors. Now let's keep going and try the other colors. Now I'm going to try this color, it's called Crocs and it changed its color uh, in the temperature. So when it's cool, it's different. So I'm just wondering if something is gonna happen once we try it as acrylic. Wow, there is a, already a marble. I wonder if those are those particles that change the color. So this one is supposed to go from dark to light. Hmm. Well, I don't know if this is what is supposed to happen or not, or it just separates. No, I think it's dark for now. 
Well, not the most easiest color to apply. And there's another one that will change the color in the sun called Aruba. So if they're gonna work as acrylic powders, I assume that they're supposed to have all the features that they have as the deep powder as well. So it is supposed to change its color in the sun. Because it won't, I will definitely not recommend you to use it as acrylic because it means obviously it's not working like it's supposed to be, so it may be not safe or something. Well, let's just leave it as an ombre. So this one looks like it's changing a bit. All right, so the last colors I applied, they're still wet, obviously, but the ones we started are supposed to be hard by now, if they are acrylic powder, so let's see. Hey, the clear is absolutely hard, guys. What about the pink? The pink as well. So these two basic colors, they, when they're acrylic powders, they're supposed to set fast, which they're doing. French white is soft, and this is also some kind of a rule, right? With the other brands, the same thing happened to white, so I guess white deep powders are not the best ones to use as the dip. So this color is called Hush, it's still, a little soft, but we just applied them all. So now let's just give them a few more minutes and see if they will harden and cure. All of them work. They are all hard. I smudged this one a little though, but still you see this is glitter and they all work. So let's check this one because it is supposed to change its color uh, according to the temperature. So let's try it with the hot water. All right, it, it, it works like exactly how it's supposed to be. It's light when it's warm and it's dark when it's cold. So I assume Revel Nail does work. All of the colors work. So I'm really curious if it's gonna actually work off the nail. So we definitely need to try this one. But first let's try another brand that I have, Rossi Nails. I have seven colors of Rossi, um, powders and they work pretty good as the dip and let's see if it's like that and if at all they will work as acrylic so the white color oh okay not the best one to apply oh my god what happened to my brush okay so you see it's kind of grainy definitely not the most um, compatible powder to apply, but we'll see. Yeah, and I assume it sets pretty slow. Okay, let's just wait. And then let's try, I also have a beautiful light blue color. Nice. Okay, this one feels much better and stretches much better. You know, it feels so weird, like, can you see it, guys? Like I'm working with a dry powder or something like that, even though I saturated with a monomer. Really weird feeling, like quite different. You see, you cannot really see the monomer, like the powder absorbed into it right away. Like, it just feels different. Actually, it does feel different when you're working with different brands, I assume, so that's normal. Let's try something glittery. So this color I tried as the dip and it worked pretty cool. And yeah, that's exactly how it looked on my nail, like a dark brown. Wow, and now it looks like pink with glitter. All right, so let's just keep going and see how other color work. Almost 10 minutes passed and the white is super soft, but as we already know, white dip powder is probably not the best idea to try as acrylic powder. Hmm, light blue is not working as well, which is sad. Usually they did work. Oh, oh my God, it's like not cured at all. You see, I can actually dig my way 
all the way to the tip. As well as, well, this color is kind of setting, but still it's too soft. As well as this one, and this one, and this one. Oh, this one is like also not cured at all. So, I assume Rossi nails, they didn't work as acrylic powder, so only use them as dip. Now we have only two powders left. I have a powder from Kiss and EC powder. So let's try them. So Kiss is the one that you can actually buy in a drugstore like Walgreens. And I just happen to have it. So why not try it as well? This is a clear pink powder. And mm, for now it feels pretty good. Almost like an actual acrylic powder. Oh yeah, absolutely. So kids, they also have an acrylic powders and kits. So I assume if they have both, that would probably for them would be economically easier to produce the same product. That's just my idea suggestion. Honestly, I have no idea how it works. That's why we're trying it all. And another one is from brand EC even remember how I got it. I only remember that the base coat that come together with this powder, it um, cured before I get a chance to actually try it. So I never got to taste, to test this brand. The red color is stretching pretty easy, but it's so wet. You see guys, it feels, yeah, also a little, Weird. So yeah, something tells me that we have to wait for a while for this one to probably cure. So since we just applied them, also let's wait for a couple minutes and see if they work. Kiss powder is hard. Absolutely feels like acrylic powder. So I guess this one passed the test and EC1 looks matte, which is kind of suspicious. And yeah, it's still rather soft, even though a few minutes passed. So, Kiss powder is working as well. I am ready to share the results of my deep powders laboratory investigations. All powders from NSI passed the test, and I already have some reliable nail technicians who did nails using them as the powder, so it's absolutely safe to use them as the acrylic. Revel nails passed, all colors passed the test as well. With Gelish, three out of many passed, with Kiara Sky, three out of five. So when it's like that, that probably means that some colors will work, some colors will not work. So that's uncertain and I would probably not recommend to use them as acrylic, but it's up to you. And the only powder from Kiss that I own also work. So since Revel Nails seems to be so reliable, but I never tried and never heard anyone using it as acrylic, I would like to try it on the nail to see how it works, if it pinches, if it files, if it lasts, and let's see what happens. I will use D48 Margot and Scarlet Flawless Pink and Super Nail Monomer. I prepped the nail, applied dehydrator and non-acid primer, fit the form and now I'm starting with creating the free edge like usual and I have to admit this color looks gorgeous it's like a little transparent pink with a small glitter green particles it totally feels like I'm working with a regular glitter acrylic which usually sets slower than traditional acrylic so we decided to do an almond shape medium length because this is the shape that this client usually prefers. I'm adding another bead, stretch it, and it feels like the bottom is already half cured, which is nice. So we're going to stretch this color almost all the way up and near the cuticle I will be using transparent pink. 
Super fine glitters are the most enjoyable to work with because it's so easy to stretch them, so easy to apply and also if you're just getting started it also might be an easier solution for you to work with acrylic as it gives you more time to apply the color. Now you can add as much glitter as you want until you're happy with the color and once you're done, I'm applying flawless pink near the cuticle and stretch it down. This is how I usually work whether I'm using nude acrylic or glitter acrylic because transparent acrylics they usually have a better adhesion and also as the product grows off it will look much better and you cannot really see the difference. Also, I prefer to encapsulate any glitter colors with pink or clear so it will set faster and also you will not have this imperfections on the surface even though we have a super fine glitter here sometimes when the sparkles get on top you will not have this super shiny smooth surface that's why i'm fully encapsulating it and we're almost done I have to say it still probably took a little longer than usual to cure, but not too much. And then I pinched the nail and I forgot to record the part with filing, but it felt exactly the same way as when I file acrylics. So I also buffed the surface and now the last step is sealing with the top coat. And this is my and my client's favorite moment when you finally get to see the true sparkle and shininess of the glitter. I'm using the gel top coat so then we cure it and the nail is ready. After three weeks we didn't experience any problems or lifting. So my conclusion is it worked 100%. Looks like gravel nail powders can be used as acrylic powders and perfectly work as this powder. So these are result of my tests and like I said when you're breaking the rules you need to be careful and always keep in mind that once you change something about the product it might work differently and it doesn't mean that it will work the same way on all of your clients so please be careful and follow all the instructions when you prep the nail, when you file it and so on. Let me guys know what do you think? Have you ever tried any of the deep powders as acrylic powders and did they work? Please share the results of your experiments in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you're first time here on my channel, consider subscribing as I post nail art tutorials and experiments just like this one every week. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.